Hey, hi there. Howdy. Welcome to Banana News. It's Bananas. I'm Kylie, and this is my co-host, Banana. Ha! Ah, what? Th- why are you so much bigger than me? Why? T- you give a fish one job, and this is what happens. Ah! <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess that's kind of that's kind of funny. That was, that was a good one. But guys, you know what else is a good one? This episode of Banana News. So make sure you stay tuned for more that's co- to come right after this. Do you ever find your brain filled with a lot of questions while watching Banana News? Would you like to have those questions answered by someone at Be Our Kids? Well then wonder no longer! Simply have a parent or guardian help you send a video message or email to BRKids at BlueRidge.org. That's BRKids at BlueRidge.org. But wait! There's more! Do you get bored during the week after all the homework, sports, TV watching, video game playing, and reading you do? Be Our Kids activity packs are fun and engaging and show you how to dig deeper into God's Word. You can pick up a pack after any live worship service you attend or by stopping by the New London campus between 12 and 1 p.m. And as a special added bonus, please enjoy watching these two people pie each other in the face. Delightful! I think it's just so great that anybody can send their questions on over to Be Our Kids so you can get them answered. And those activity packets, they're just so awesome. Don't believe me? Ask this guy. Yeah, so fun! So make sure you go and pick one up for this week. This week we're going to be diving in about his truths and that when we are under pressure, God is with us. See, sometimes when we're in those hard situations, we tend to lean on God the most and rely on God the most. But I don't know about you, but I'm just so grateful that God is always with me, not only when I'm just in the hard situations. This makes me think of some stressful um, and really stressful and hard situations that some people might go through. So my friends, I present to you the Talent Show Auditions. Whenever you're ready. And I, I will always love you. I will always love you. I will always love you. That was it. That was, that was it. Oh, next. You know, I wanna like it, I really do. It's just painful to watch. Thank you, next.
Can I borrow that real quick? Thank you. This is my goodbye song. It's not very long. Au revoir. To be or not to be? You know, I'm just gonna have to say it. It's not to be, thank you. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. I'm just doing my- How was that? Oh, uh, okay, that, that was good. That, you're moving on. We've been learning about the Israelites and the high pressure situations that they've been going through. So this week we're going to learn about the true story about a judge and prophetess named Deborah. Now, these two soldiers that you're about to meet, they weren't really there, but the story that they tell is true. So let's listen in on this riveting card game that they enjoy. Got any sevens? Go fish. Got any twos? Go fish. Got any kings? Uh, just one, and I wish I could get rid of him. This again? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, go fish. Just can't believe it happened again. What happened? We turned away from God, and now we're being ruled by some terrible foreign king of Canaan. Sound familiar? Yep. How do we keep doing this to ourselves? We seem to be struggling to be obedient with God. Life's really hard, you know? Yeah. It's not like we can even do anything about it. King, King Jabin's army is just so huge. Well, there's nothing we can do now. We've already prayed to God and asked for his forgiveness. All we can do is wait and see if he restores us back to him. Yeah. Well, if I were God, I would have given up on us a long time ago. We haven't been very good at being his chosen people. That's why I'm grateful for God, because he loves us more than anyone else could. Ain't that the truth? Got any force? Go fish. Got any tens? Go fish. Who is it? Oh, it's Commander Barak. Apparently that prophetess Deborah told him that God is going to let us beat Jabin's army, which has like 900 chariots and like a bazillion soldiers. Apparently Barak is only supposed to take like 10,000 men and go up Mount Tabor. Apparently, God is going to be leading Jabin's army right to us, led by Commander Sisera. Hmm. Let's see, how should I respond to that? Oh, I know. Cool story, bro. Thumbs up emoji. Got any eights? Go fish. Brock would be pretty crazy to take all of our men to fight against Sisera and his army. I mean, he's practically known as the smartest commander around. What kind of crazies would follow him into that? Got any sevens? You already asked me that. Go fish. Now what is it? <sighs> Whoa, he wants us to follow him to face off against Sisera. What? Oh, I just got the group text too. I mean, can't really say no. We are soldiers after all. Good point. Finish this when we get back? Sure. <sighs> I'm a little busy right now. Maybe next time. Just kidding. Winky face emoji. <laughs> LOL. On my way. Footprint emoji. Alright, okay. Hey, Mom. Gotta go to battle at Mount Tabor. Be praying for us. Love you. Hey, Mom. Cicero got word of our army at Mount Tabor. They are heading this way now. They should be here tomorrow. Pray for me, getting nervous. We're about to go charge in against Cicero and King Jabin's army. Going to be great. We blew those Canaanites away. Cicero ran away like a scaredy cat. Hey mom, so Commander Barak found Cicero hiding in the tent. There was a lady there. JL, you know her? Anyway, she killed Cicero before we got there. Crazy, the battle is over. 
That was a great battle. We didn't even lose a single guy. I know, I can't believe it was so easy. God really was with us and heard our prayers. Now we can just sit back, ugh, relax, and finish this game. I think it's your turn. All right, um, got any sevens? <laughs> Go fish. Okay, so you're probably thinking that what you just saw didn't happen that way in the Bible. <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> The cell phones, yeah, they didn't have those back then. So you're not wrong. But the story that the two soldiers shared is absolutely true, and you can read about it in Judges chapter number four. Okay, so you guys remember the mercy cycle that we talked about last week? Okay, in the book of Judges, you can see this cycle that the Israelites went through over and over and over again, and it started with them sinning and disobeying God's way. So then they get overtaken by their enemies, but then they'd feel bad and they'd repent and cry out to God for help. And so God would raise up a judge to help rescue them. And then the Israelites would live in peace and rest for several years. But do you guys remember what a judge is? A judge is a leader of Israel who gave messages from God to the people and would help rescue God's people when they were in trouble. And in Judges chapter four, verse number four, we are introduced to the only female judge mentioned in the Bible. Check this out. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. So what was the name of this judge and prophetess? Deborah! Hey Deborah, what what? Since Deborah was a prophetess, she would give messages from God to the people of Israel. So one day she reminded Barak, the leader of the Israelite army at the time, that God had told him to take 10,000 men to Mount Tabor to prepare to defeat Sisera and King Jabin's army. Because King Jabin, well, he was a foreign king who oppressed or made the life really hard for the Israelites. Well, Sisera found out about Barak's plan to go to Mount Tabor, so Sisera readied up his army, including 900 iron chariots, and set out to meet Israel at Mount Tabor. Well, listen to this. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Does not the Lord go out before you? So Barak, went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. Deborah was reminding them that the one true God of the whole entire universe was with them and he was leading them and would give them victory. So Barak and the Israelite army go to Mount Tabor. Sisera and King Jabin's army also go out to Mount Tabor to meet them there. And guess what? God helped the Israelite army defeat King Jabin's army, and every one of their soldiers died except for Sisera, who ran away. Yeah, he ran off the battlefield, and he came to a tent of a woman that he knew wasn't his enemy, and this woman's name was Jael. Well, Sisera had no idea that God planned to save the Israelites from King Jabin and his army and from him, and his plan was to use Jael to also save the Israelites. So, uh, while Sisera was sleeping, J.L. sneaked into the tent and, well, she killed the evil commander, Sisera. And Barak, he, he came along because he was looking for Sisera, like, hey, where's Sisera? And J.L.'s like, hey, come over here, see this. Yeah, Sisera's no longer going to be a problem. But you know what? God did that to save the Israelites, and eventually King Jabin was totally destroyed. And all of that was possible because God loved his people, and he cared about them, and he fought for them. See, the Israelites were under pressure, but God was with them. And when we are under pressure, God is with us. And remember that God is with us even when things are going well for us too. We just don't usually think about it because we might feel like we got everything under control, no big problem. But let's check in with Sensei Skippy to see what we can do when we do feel pressure and stress in our lives. Check this out. Konnichiwa, young grasshoppers. If life is good and you don't have much stress or pressure in your life right now, that's great. Praise God and show him how grateful you are. But maybe 
your life is hard right now. Maybe it's school, or friendships, or maybe it's that you're not able to do things that you're used to. Or maybe your family is going through a hard time right now, or something else. Whatever the case may be, something in your life makes you feel like you could just snap and your life feels like it's in pieces. Well, check this out. If you have a relationship with God and you believe that he is with you and trust him and choose to follow his plan for you, then when the pressures of life come crashing in, we can rely on God's strength to keep us from falling apart. When we are under pressure, God is with us. Can you say that with me? When we are under pressure, God is with us. Good. Now let's do our best to remember that truth. Sayonara! Let me share something with you guys. Now I don't always think about the truth, how God is always with me, and I don't always feel him there like I feel a family member or a pet, but I believe that God is with me and I believe that the Bible is true and I believe that God is real because I have a relationship with him. So I'm gonna pray and just thank God for always being with me and you guys can join too. Father, you are so, so good and I just thank you for this truth that we got to learn today. Just diving into your word even more, I thank you that you are always with us in no matter what we're going through, that you are always with us. I thank you for that and I thank you for your love. I pray that throughout this week, all of our friends and everyone who's watching and just around us could just continue to feel your presence, that they would feel your presence and that they would know that you are with them, always with us. God, we love you so much and it is in your mighty son, Jesus' mighty precious name we pray, amen. Um, so, Banana, call time was at seven. Where have you been, Mrs. Late Pants? I had to use a fake puppet, a puppet of you, because you were late. I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Right, right? Yeah. But sadly, that's time. That's it for our show today. But don't worry, you guys get to see Banana next time. So, from myself, Banana the late beta fish, and everyone here at BR Kids, we want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next week.